Hey there, Nick Junithakis here. In this video, we're going to go over installing and using the new Tailwind JIT compiler, aka the Just-in-Time compiler. So in case you missed the announcement, Adam, the creator of Tailwind, released this new Tailwind plugin or extension called the JIT compiler. And he has a really nice video here breaking down, you know, why he created it and what it does. So I recommend watching that video because this video is not going to be just paraphrasing or parroting what he says in that video. Uh, if you want to learn the gory details about why it was created and things like that, then, you know, this video from Adam is uh, the place to go to listen to that because because chances are Adam knows a thing or two about Tailwind. Uh, in this video, we are going to focus on taking an existing Tailwind project that happens to be using Webpack, and we are going to install the JIT compiler and see just how big of a difference it makes in terms of making things a lot faster. So in case you haven't watched this video, you know, the TLDR about this JIT compiler is, it is going to make Tailwind in development so much better, so much faster, because instead of having to render something like a three or six megabyte file in development, uh, this new JIT compiler is only going to generate the exact CSS that you need for rendering whatever page that you happen to have. So it, it's almost going to work the way that post-CSS uh, or per-CSS works in production, except we're not gonna have to pay the penalty of waiting for uh, per-CSS to do its magic. It's all going to be very, very fast. Now, you'll know that uh, you know if you're a watcher of this channel, I did create a video back in, I think it was November or December 2020, way before this JIT compiler existed, you know, ways to make Tailwind a lot faster in development if you're using Webpack. And one strategy there was to enable Webpack's file system cache, and that really brought things down on my machine at least to where uh, Webpack and Tailwind in development would run in, I don't know, maybe three to 400 milliseconds instead of, you know, waiting six uh, full seconds for it to load. And for changing, you know, or updating a CSS file, there were things that you can do, and that video covers all the stuff in detail, by the way. Like you can import your uh, Tailwind in a little bit of a different way to make it so where you don't need to wait six seconds if you just updated your CSS file. Instead, it would come down to like two to 300 milliseconds. And you know, those are great strategies and they worked for what they were, but those were sort of band-aid solutions. And it didn't solve really the biggest problem here, which is, you know, this application right now doesn't have the JIT compiler enabled, but you know, if I view the source code here and check out this app.css file, notice how this thing is loading and the scroll bar is getting bigger and bigger and it's still loading and there it goes finally. Like this file is absolutely monstrous in size. And I don't even know how many lines or whatever it is. Let me go to dev tools here, the sources, and we'll check it out here. And uh, this app.css file, well, if I scroll down to the bottom here, which is lagging, by the way, it is uh, pretty freaking big. We're looking at 183,924 lines of CSS. And of all of these lines here, I don't know, I'm going to guess that like probably 181,000 of those lines are just not being used at all because I'm just not using those classes. So this JIT compiler is going to reduce that by a lot. And uh, yeah, so let's get right to it in this video. By the way, the example app we're looking at here is this Docker uh, Flask example. I'm going to do another video about this one uh, in the future, but for now, just understand that the source code to all this is available here. And by the way, this code does not have the uh, JIT compiler uh, installed into it right now, but let's talk about that a little bit later. So let me go to the source code here. And, you know, I did start up Webpack, it's a Dockerized application, but we can see here by my mouse, uh, Webpack without the cache took six and a half seconds to install, or uh, start up, sorry. And uh, that's on purpose because I disabled the cache, I cleared it out basically just to see like the pure before, right? But if I run it up again, again, not using the JIT compiler here, with the Webpack cache, things are going to start a lot faster, right? 500 milliseconds. But, you know, that comes at a price because, you know, we had to enable the file system cache. And, you know, that, that other video goes into the details about that one. But uh, let me just very quickly go over, like, my current Webpack config, right? This, These are the lines that are specific to creating the file system cache. So let's get rid of that, actually, because uh, we don't want to use the cache anymore. Uh, we're just going to let Webpack cache stuff in memory and not deal with file system caching anymore. Now let's just go over installing the JIT compiler. So it is available on NPM. And by the way, at the time I'm making this video, the current version is 1. Point, or 0 0.13. Highly recommend that you use the latest version at the time of watching this video. But let's go ahead and just copy this package name here, which is going to be at Tailwind CSS JIT. And then we'll go to our package.json file here. We'll still need to have Tailwind installed, but you know I can paste that in here. Uh, this is the package that we want to install. What was that version? 1. Point, uh, 0 0.13. There we go. Cool. So I'm going to go and build that now. So I'm using a Dockerized application. It may be a little bit different for you, but for me, uh, I have a script installed here where I can just do run, yarn install, and that's going to basically do a Docker Compose build and re, uh, create a lock file on disk. Not important to get into that stuff here. It's going to go very fast because I've actually uh, built this off camera just so it's a little bit quicker, but everything's going to get installed, blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's do some other changes that we need to do to make this JIT compiler work. So that is going to require going to your post CSS config file 
And we can just duplicate this line here. Well, technically, we're not going to duplicate anything, but uh, if you wanted to keep an old copy, you could have. But instead, now uh, we are going to reference the at Tailwind CSS uh, forward slash JIT instead of what it was before, which was just Tailwind CSS. So that is going to take care of getting uh, all this set up here and installed. And it looks like all the packages are ready to be uh, set up and be good to go. So I'm going to clear my cache here and then run a Docker Compose up. And let's see how long it takes to start everything up, specifically that Webpack container. So all the containers are starting now. Cool, very good, up, 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 up. And then eventually the Webpack stuff is going to pop open here. And we can see it took about two seconds to load here. And uh, Webpack compiled everything in 118 milliseconds after it was loaded up. And if I go back to the page over here and reload this, then uh, we can see everything works uh, normal, right? Everything is loading, everything is good. And if you go to the page source here and click the app, that CSS immediately loaded. Scroll bar, way smaller. And that's all the CSS for this file. So let's actually see uh, how big this actually is. So I'm going to go to the network tab, reload. And we can see the app.css here, the second one. Then uh, that is 14 kilobytes in size. That's not too bad. That is uh, a lot smaller than it was before. And if I go to sources here, we can see that it's not even a thousand lines of code. You know, previously, what was that? Like 183,294 or whatever. Now 793, not too shabby. And uh, let me go back here. And then, uh, yeah, let's make a CSS change and see how long that takes. So uh, if I go to my app.css file, then you'll notice it's empty. There's no Tailwind imports here because in that other video, the one I created, you know, back in December or whatever, you know, I mentioned that how you can break up uh, Tailwind into two files here, like before and after. I guess I can open them very fast here, before and after. Uh, you know, basically breaking up the base and components and utilities and then importing them in your JavaScript and that'll allow you to change your CSS. But uh, let's not do this pattern anymore. And let me just go to uh, the app.js here, comment out these lines completely. Cool. And then go to my app.css here which was previously empty because things were being imported with JavaScript. But now let's just go to Tailwind's uh, installation notes here, grab the imports, and then uh, pop them in here just as they are by default or whatever. And uh, I can save this file here. And we can see, look at that. Everything was uh, reloaded in like 180 milliseconds. And if I go back to the page here and reload, then everything is still good to go, right? And just to be uh, doubly sure that things are working as intended, let me just close everything down and then do another up here. And we will see, uh, hopefully, things will start very fast, right? Everything is starting. There's the web. There's the worker. There's Webpack. Two seconds. Everything is great. So uh, I go back to the page. Everything is good. Let me go back here. And uh, maybe we'll just make a, a little silly change here. Like for the body, let's change the background color to be something like, uh, I don't know, blue, right? A horrible color. And technically, if you're using Tailwind, you would never do this, right? Because you would just add the BG blue to the body, right? But we're talking about CSS changes. How long does it actually take? So save the file over here. We can see that in 172 milliseconds, no uh, file system cache or webpack. Things are just reloading and looking good. And if I go to here and reload it, uh, we get the blue. So everything is really, really nice. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for setting up Tailwind. Now, or the JIT compiler, I should say. Uh, let me go back to the white here. Now, it is worth pointing out, though, this project is open source, right? But this JIT compiler is not pushed up at the time I'm making this video. That is because this JIT compiler is currently uh, experimental, right? He just published this a couple of days ago, Adam, right? Uh, that was when, March 15th or whatever. And, you know, I am using this in a, in a smaller project right now, the JIT compiler, and it's working great. But there are some known limitations down here on the bottom. Uh, I'm not going to go over all of these bullet points because it really depends on your application. But you know, beware that uh, you may run into little bugs here and there, but you know, Adam's quality of work is very good. So this stuff is going to get way better in due time. Uh, eventually it's going to be built into Tailwind 3 later this year, according to Adam in that video. And uh, you know, you can enable it as like an experimental feature somewhere in between when it gets more uh, stable. But for now, installing it really wasn't painful at all, right? Install this package, then you just change your PostCSS import for Tailwind and basically good to go, right? Um, but with that said, you know, this project here, this Docker Flask example app, it's meant to be like a production ready project. And that's why I didn't push it up here. But uh, when this gets a little bit more stable, I am for sure going to include it into this project here. And I will make a whole video about this uh, example project in another day. But, you know, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, I am really excited about this uh, JIT compiler because that was always my biggest gripe with Tailwind, right? The development experience was a little bit slow. I had to do many hours of research to get the Webpack caching solution to get reasonable. But now knowing that I can just get rid of all of that code and just do everything normal now and it's really fast, really looking uh, forward to using Tailwind because, uh, and by the way, you know, we didn't look at this uh, here, but uh, if I scroll up, 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 up somewhere, how big is this? Yeah, this, nope, still a lot more. Uh, 
just going over the basic size of what the Tailwind uh, CSS file that was generated before we ran the new JIT compiler, it was absolutely massive in size. And uh, I can't find it here, but it, it was like 3.75 megs or something. Yeah, it was way before this, wasn't it? Up, 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 up. Yeah, there it is, 3.72 megabytes, right? Uh, and this file would easily get a lot faster, uh, or a lot larger, I should say, right? As you enable more Tailwind things. So uh, imagine what it would be like if I enabled dark mode or a couple more colors in my Tailwind config. This thing would be like eight megabytes in size. And you know, instead of being six seconds, maybe it would be like 15 seconds. So uh, this JIT compiler is awesome for that. And with that said, you know, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer all those in the comments below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps. And on that note, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.